Hey guys, I'm Kayla from Journey Dog Training and we're here today to talk about kitchen manners for your dog. So we're going to be talking about how to keep your dog from begging, how to get your dog out from under your feet while you're cooking, how to keep your dog from stealing food if you drop it, how to prevent a little bit of resource guarding, and finally how to keep your dog from stealing food from the counters. So kind of an all around kitchen uh, skills thing today. So let's start at the top. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that, as I said, my name is Kayla and I'm with Journey Dog Training. I'm an associate certified dog behavior consultant and we offer one-on-one -on -one online dog training solutions for everything from aggression to anxiety. So anything that you guys and your dogs or cats are struggling with, we can pretty much help you out. Um, we do phone and video chat based one-on-one -on -one coaching where I'll demonstrate with Barley how to do something, you do it with your dog, we go back and forth. We also will do email or text-based support where you can shoot me videos of you working with your dog and I can give you feedback and you guys can kind of ask me ongoing questions as you hit snags in the training process. Um, so both of those are really great options for people who are busy, don't live near a good trainer, um, don't live near any trainers at all, um, or travel a lot, you know, kind of any Anything that makes it a little bit harder for you to work with kind of your local trainer, if there is a local trainer, we go ahead and solve that for you guys. So um, I think Barley is ready to get going, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's talk about how to keep your dog out of the kitchen and out of the dining room, keep them from getting underfoot, and keep them from begging. So with this, I like to think of the concept of teaching your dog to go long. So your dog is underfoot and drooling on your leg because he has learned that staying right near you while you are cooking gets him good stuff. Um, or at least he gets good smells. If you guys are way better than I am about never dropping food, whether it's accidental or, you know, kind of accidental on purpose. Odds are one of you guys is dropping food or feeding your dog. And that is why your dog is constantly tripping you when you're in the kitchen and drooling on your feet while you're trying to eat dinner. So I like the solution of go long because it teaches your dog a way to get what he wants um, in a way that gets you what you want, which is keeping your dog out of the kitchen and out of the way. Also, for those of us who have a hard time not sharing our food with our dogs, and I'm totally one of those people, um, and this is especially good for kids and other softies like me, we can go ahead and continue feeding our dog just in a way that keeps everyone a little bit happier. So those of you who are familiar with journey dog training will not be surprised to hear that we are using a mat for this problem. There are very few problems that in my opinion, a little bit of mat training or target training can't at least make better. And you guessed it, we're gonna be using one here. So for a little bit more information on mat training, you guys can go ahead on over to my YouTube channel, blog, or Facebook page for journey dog training and find the video that talks about teaching your dog to behave well in public places like bars and coffee shops. I can't remember the exact title of the video, but I'll be sure to try to link it below. Um, and that talks a lot more about how to get started with mat training, but essentially what I'll do, is I'll take my mat, I'll put it where I would like the dog to be, and the dog goes to the mat. Awesome, right? And now we can give our dog his kibble or treats or share whatever we're eating with him, as long as it's dog friendly and dog safe, all that good stuff, while we're doing what we're doing and the dog is out of the way. So I can go on over here, I can sit down. This chair is not short enough, not tall enough. I can sit down, enjoy my meal, or I can be over here doing dishes, whatever it is, I can move around the kitchen and Barley is out of the way. Obviously, um, he is exactly where he is right now because that's where it works for the camera. Normally I would actually have him basically where you guys are to get him out of the way. because This is not very convenient as far as the fridge goes. The other pro tip that I would like to add for you guys here is I know it's not always great to be trying to cook or eat and getting your hands covered in dog slobber and dog treats. So this is where stuffed Kongs, bully sticks, pig's ears, and cow esophaguses. So basically if you can freeze or dehydrate it and it's like a big chunky treat, you can go ahead and give your dog one of those while he's on his mat and he'll be getting rewarded without you getting dog treats and dog slobber all over your hands. Another pro tip for as you guys are training your dog to do this um, is you guys probably want to go ahead and have a safety measure in place. 
So that is where I will go ahead and use a leash and tie the dog down to the table or the chair, coffee table, couch, or you can loop the leash over um, a doorknob and then close it in the door. So you, you, like if there's a doorknob on this side, I'll actually loop it to the doorknob on this side and then close the door and then the leash comes out. Does that make sense? Um, that keeps the dog there in event that I forget for too long and I don't give him any treats and he wants to start getting up and coming towards me. Um, hopefully we're giving our dog enough treats that he feels satisfied and he's gonna stay there, but just in case, it's nice to have that safety measure. So that is basically my number one way for keeping the dog out of the way while I'm cooking or cleaning or eating or whatever and I just don't want the dog under my feet or drooling on my feet um, while I'm doing that. The other option is to go ahead and use um, a backup cue. So I use the backup cue a lot because I honestly at this point don't always put barley on his mat. He's generally pretty good about just lying out of the way um, and I don't always have the mat with me. You know, you know how it goes. And, but sometimes there are times where I really need him to move and I need him to move relatively quickly, potentially, you know, let's just say hypothetically, I have two hands full of a plate full of hot cookies and I need him to be moving out of my way. That's where a backup cue comes in really handy. So Barley, back up. Good boy. So backing up is really, really useful and we can go ahead and teach that using kind of a two pronged method. So what I like doing is I start out sitting. Come here, bud. Good. I'm going to go ahead and kind of open my legs a, a, a little bit, feed him to get him to come in, and then wait for him to take that step back. Most dogs who don't love physical contact will back up. And also dogs that are used to training and want to be a little bit further away so they can see your face will naturally back up with this. Um, shoot me a message if this doesn't work, but for most of us, if we're feeding our dog kind of right in here, you can even back up on the chair a little bit more so that he has to come, good. Come, so that he has to come in a little bit closer before he gets fed, that will work as well. Then what I like to do is I translate it to standing. So again, and it's easy to get a little bit confused with this one as far as like when you're giving treats and when you're not and stuff. So what I do is I feed in here, wait, and he backs up. And I actually am not going to reward him for that one because I want him to back up while standing because we also use this for obedience. Um, so, but for you guys, if your dog backs up into a sit, that's probably fine. Um, so again, just to show you guys. So we feed a treat in here, dog comes in close, Dog probably backs up because he doesn't like being in that close. Give another treat. So there's a lot of treats involved here. That's totally fine. I recommend using your dog's breakfast kibble for training um, for this reason. Good. So the other thing that we can do here is we want our dog to back up probably more than he's currently backing up. So I'm going to move back a little bit. So Barley's got a runway. I'm going to feed him a treat between my legs. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm not going to say good until he's backed up a little bit further than he has been backing up. And that starts teaching him, look at that begging, isn't he adorable? Um, that starts teaching him to back up more and more and more. So we'll go ahead and feed a treat here. Good. Might take a couple reps, but for dogs that are experienced with shaping, which is, you know, basically your dog's trying to guess what you want and you feed them as they get closer and closer to what you like. They'll probably catch on to that pretty quickly. If they're not, go ahead and reset, try again. And I don't want you guys to start adding multiple steps back until your dog is basically taking a step back as soon as you've, um, as soon as he's done swallowing that treat from in between your legs, he takes that step back. So again, that'll then translate into back up. Good. A really nice little backup behavior. That is really great if you've got that plate full of cookies and you need your dog to get out of the way. So that's how to get your dog out of the way, get your dog to stay out of the way. Again, there's just, I love mat training guys. I love it. Um, then let's talk a little bit about leave it and drop it and exchange games and other kind of resource guardy stuff. So um, let's say you guys didn't listen to me and you didn't put your dog on the mat and you didn't use the leash so now your dog is trying to beat you to a piece of chicken. Again, if you guys are using the leash, your dog can't get to that piece of chicken when you drop it. 
Um, and if you guys are using the mat, there's a less of a chance that he's gonna go for it, and he's also further away from it if he does choose to go for it. So again, the mat training can really help with this. Um, because again, if your dog is on that mat, he knows he's getting fed for being on the mat. He's more likely to stay on the mat even if you drop something. And even if he does go for it, it's not like, you know, if your dog is like already in between your legs while you're trying to flip a piece of chicken or flip a pancake or whatever, um, there's a very good chance he's going to get it when you drop it. <laughs> if he's already kind of across the kitchen on his mat being a good boy and you're feeding him, you're, you know, you're, you're doing the go long thing, he might not be able to get to that pancake or chicken or whatever before you do. So that's great. But let's say that we really do need kind of that fast paced leave it. And this is a really important thing, guys, because resource guarding can often develop when our dogs learn that we wrestle things out of their mouths, we take good things from them, and that's not good for anyone. So I am going to go ahead and grab a beef esophagus to demonstrate with because it's really easy, it's much easier to demonstrate this with something that's a little bit longer lasting as far as the chew. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so we've got this little beef esophagus thing. Barley loves these. It's just dehydrated cow throat. It's gross. Um, but they're cheaper than a pulley sticks or pig's ears, so that's why we often have them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate first kind of an it's your choice thing, which is how we start teaching leave it. And then I'm going to demonstrate an exchange game for if your dog does get something that you really want him to drop. So the it's your choice game. Good boy. That is what we like to see. So the it's your choice game. We've got some food in my hand. Gonna get on Barley's level. And I've got the food here. Good boy. Um, and we've been doing a lot of high fives, so he's gonna try to high five me. That's fine, it's adorable. And he's kind of sniffing it. I open my hand again, and he leaves it, so he gets a treat. Start higher, because that's easier for your dog. As you move lower, things get harder. <laughs> my dog is trying to shake, because he's a perfect creature. Good boy. And ultimately, what we can do is we can move this to being on the ground. Get that in frame. Being on the ground. Come here. Over here. So ultimately, we can get this on the ground. And I know it's a little bit hard for you guys to see, but we can open. He doesn't go for it. So he gets a treat. And then we can build up to dropping, leave it, cover with your foot, treat. I want you guys to go ahead and pick up the food and give it to them or give it to them from a different hand rather than giving that, releasing them to that one just because it kind of reduces the expectation that he's going to be released to the thing. Um, so the big thing to keep in mind with it's your choice, which is how I pretty much always teach leave it. We start with the food in our hands. Start with our hands closed. As soon as the dog backs up, you open your hand. At first, if your dog even doesn't dive in for like a half second, give him a treat. And start higher than your dog because that's going to be easier and then gradually move your hands down and start expecting him to wait a little bit longer before you pick up the treat and give it to him. So ultimately that might look like the hand is, I'll demonstrate. Got a hand right here, we open and we wait. All right, so we're gonna give him the cow esophagus, give it to him right here, and then I'm gonna demonstrate two different ways for uh, getting it back. So first, give it to him here, go ahead. Gotta let, him, gotta let him actually go for it. Good boy. Oh, no, no, you gotta stay over here, bud. Come here. Yeah, there you go. So he's going to go ahead and chew on that a little bit. I'm going to let him get into it. And then we're going to demonstrate two different ways. So there's one way, which is basically an exchange game. So I've got some treats here. I'm going to go ahead and drop those near him so that he goes for those. That's going to give me a minute to pick up what he's got. So if your dog grabs something that you want to take away from him um, and he is not leaving it, ideally we try this obviously there are probably going to be times where you have to basically tackle your dog and like fish hook something terrible out of the back of their throat but this is more ideal so if your dog has something that you want to take away from them we've got the exchange game option so i'm going to take these treats put them next to his head so that he grabs those and then he, i'll grab that thing then i'm going to give it back to him because he's allowed to have it good boy 
And this is something Barley and I do with some frequency because he actually does have a tendency to growl at me um, around really, really good food. Actually, just yesterday, he got a big piece of chicken because he's eating raw as of yesterday. Um, and <laughs> my boyfriend was trying to film him getting his first raw meal. And Barley actually stopped eating and like gave him a really hard stink eye. So this is a thing that Barley does struggle with. So we practice this a lot. I'm gonna give this back to him. Take it. Good boy. And then, so that's one option. That's a great option. Again, it's much better than trying to have to tackle your dog and steal something from them. But obviously sometimes that's gonna happen. The other option that I really like um, is I'm gonna get a bunch of treats ready to pay him really well because this is really hard. Barley, touch. Good boy. Ask them to touch their nose to your hand. Go ahead and give it back because he deserves it. He's, he's a perfect creature. Um, he's not. Um, ask him to do something instead. That is gonna be a lot harder, but it's also really, really nice because you're not even really tricking them, you know? Um, again, it's something that's a little bit harder, but I really like that as an option as well. So the last thing here is going to be talking about resource guarding. Uh, or not, Jesus. So the last thing here is going to be talking about counter surfing. So dogs that steal food from counters. This is kind of a long subject, so I'm gonna grab a chair and I'm gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about it. All right, so let's talk about resource guarding. Or, pff, Jesus. All right, so let's talk about counter surfing. So this is something that I have rather intimate knowledge of. When we um, lived in Denver with Barley, Barley had a pretty nasty habit of stealing just about everything off the counters. Um, for a little bit of context, I worked at an animal shelter at that point in time, and I worked four 10 hour shifts per week with commute that often meant I was out of the house for 11 and a half hours. Barley did have a midday dog walker, two days, and then the other two days were Saturday and Sunday, so Andrew was in and out, um, but it was a long time. And he essentially started stealing his own food and then starting stealing our food and then started stealing empty containers that once contained food. So it got to be a pretty serious problem for us. Um, he was stealing things like tomatoes and uh, bananas and dirty Tupperware, um, even wooden spoons that had already been cleaned. He was really just, you know, look, checking those counters and we actually filmed him and he was checking the counters multiple times per day. And you could see actually as at the beginning of the day, you know, at 8 a.m. he'd check the counters, nothing good, not worth it. Uh, you know, maybe by noon, right after the dog walker left, he'd check again and like, you know, nothing worth it. And then around like 4 p.m., he would check the counters and be like, you know what? That Tupperware is good enough. I'm going to take it. Just anthropomorphizing a little bit. But, you know, that's that's my best guess for what he was thinking. Um, and you could actually see him getting less and less picky throughout the day. So if you guys are struggling with a dog that steals food while you're gone, um, you're going to want this tip. This tip is not as useful for those of you who have a dog that steals food out of your hand um, or steals food, you know, like if you are watching um, The Good Place um, for five hours on a Saturday and you have to get up and go to the bathroom and you leave your super tasty um, snack, movie snack, on the uh, the coffee table, you know, at eye level for your dog and your dog steals it, this is not going to help you. Um, for dogs that steal food out of your hand, put them on their mat, teach them to go along. For dogs that steal food off the coffee table while you go to the bathroom, um, don't put your food on the coffee table while you go to the bathroom, pick it up. Um, it's just, it's, it's not honestly worth the training problem if you've got a dog who already steals food to deal with that. You're already getting up to go to the bathroom. So, you know, either take your food with you. Um, I guess that's maybe a little bit gross or, you know, put it up, put it in the fridge, put it in the cupboard. Um, that's what we do. Um, and the reason this is so hard and it's not really worth trying to fix it if your dog is stealing food while you leave it on the counter or on the on the coffee table right at eye level is essentially it's a really really hard behavior to break because it's kind of like gambling you know like your your dog is getting the best treat of the week probably um so he's got an amazing reason to continue doing this 
And it's also kind of a thrill, um, essentially, where it's like sometimes he checks and there's nothing, and sometimes it's just like, ugh, sour gummies, whatever, those aren't very good if you're a dog. And sometimes it's like a whole freaking tuna sandwich. So it's really addictive for dogs, and it's also, again, that's probably the best treats he's getting all week. The other reason that it's really hard to deal with this problem, this applies to both the actual counter surfing while we're at work and um, thievery of snacks while you're in the bathroom, is which are kind of one and the same problem, it's just kind of a difference in degree, um, is that essentially the best knowledge we have of where dogs came from is that dogs were scavengers that were friendly to people. Um, and we probably basically befriended our dumpster wolves that then became our dogs. Um, so dogs scavenging and stealing food is in their nature. And you can see that with the stray dogs around the world. So what I like to do when I'm trying to fix a dog that has some counter surfing issues is I actually just give them something else to scavenge. Um, and it's not quite as simple as it sounds when I say that. So what I actually did is I took, um, and I still do this to this day because I actually like him to continue learning this lesson over and over so that he doesn't, um, you know, go back to his old counter surfing ways. Um, I will take his food and put it in a couple different puzzle toys. So I might put it in a Kong wobbler and a snuffle mat. And then I've got a pig's ear and a dental stick and a bully stick, say. So we've got five different things. And I might put one tucked a little bit under the couch, one inside of his crate, one under a blanket, um, one inside the bedroom under the bed and one, um, you know, maybe on top of the couch or something because he's allowed on the couch. And all of those are well below knee height so that they're teaching him that if he wants to look for things, that's great. He's going to find awesome things if he tries. And they're always going to be hidden really low. So there's no point looking up high. And all of that kind of comes together to basically teach your dog that you leaving is awesome. He's going to find some things. He's going to get the best treats of the day because um, this then happens every day. And they're always low, so there's no point in looking high. So that reduces the error rate if you guys do hide something, or if you guys do forget, and there's something up high, your dog is more likely to ignore it or less likely to check because he's been learning for the last weeks or maybe even months that looking low is better than looking high. Finally, the other thing that we did is um, right in the beginning, the first thing I did when I realized this was like a really big problem was I actually took a piece of cardstock and I taped it on our door right at eye level. And that cardstock said, stop. Is the dog in the crate? If not, make sure the counters are clear. And basically that reminded me that if I wasn't going to take the time to clear the counters, then I effectively was going to be punished because I don't like putting barley in the crate by leaving barley in the crate. So that incentivized me to remember to put, to clear off the counters, take the minute to do it. Um, and it reminded me to do it. So that really, really helped. You would think that as a professional dog trainer, I could just remember to keep my counters clean before I leave for work, but I oversleep and spend too much time in the morning, just like the rest of you guys. And I end up behind schedule. And there were days where I forgot and leaving that card up there really helped me remember. So I think that's just about it. You guys, again, we kind of covered how to keep your dog out of the kitchen using mat training, how to get your dog out from underfoot, using back up, how to teach your dog to leave it using the it's your choice training, how to deal with some resource guarding or take something back from your dog using the, um, the exchange games as well as that target. And then finally, how to deal with some counter surfing using that like low scavenger model. So again, Kayla here from Journey Dog Training, please go ahead and follow my blog, follow my YouTube channel, Find us on Facebook Live. We do weekly live training Tuesdays every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. You can join me live there. And again, you guys can obviously catch these things later on any of those three channels. And I would love to give you and your dog a hand if you need some personalized help with your dog. So we'll see you later.